<coughs> All right, everybody, let's try it. Uh, oh, not ready yet. What I did, I started out with a uh, just a typical equation, and uh, I, the notes were called stoichiometry of a chemical reaction. And the reason I like this really well is because that's what's happening out there in the real world. Any company who has anything to do with making chemicals, whether they're medicines or glues or uh, dog food, uh, whatever they're making that has to do with them having chemical reactions. Do you know we have a big company in Greensboro that makes these little tiny pellets that go in diapers? You know that? And, and that's what makes the, they, they soak up like 10,000 times their own weight in water. So they make a layer of plastic, a layer of plastic and put these in there. And when the baby pees, it goes in there and instead of going all over the floor, it goes into pellets and the pellets swell up well, <clears throat> they make that chemical and they sell it to the Pampers company or what's the other one? Huggies, is that the other one? Don't you guys know about diapers yet? <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I'm telling you, there are a lot of diapers sold around here, isn't there? There are a lot of disposable diapers sold. Oh, well. <clears throat> All right, so everybody up here, <clears throat> we started with a balance equation. And I started with a number, and I just made this number up, didn't I? Didn't I just say I'm going to start with 100 grams? So if you ask me, where did you get that number? I just made it up. I just made it up. <clears throat> now, if I start with 100 grams of that, then how many grams of oxygen will react with it? And you said, I'm going to go from here to here. No, you're not. Can't do that, can you? So what we can do is we can go down in the mole world, dig tunnels. That's where moles live. We can go step one, step two. Step three. Now, <clears throat> if you can remember that, you should be able to do the factor label. Let's review factor label. <clears throat> I'm changing grams of propane to moles of propane. Ready? Grams of propane to moles of propane. Now, do you notice how I use molar mass on that? Did I use molar mass? Okay, so when I ask you to do your work, I'm gonna ask you to do the long cut. All right, so that's that right there is how I got that number there. Now here's nothing new. Here's something you have never done until yesterday. How do you change moles of one chemical into moles of another? <clears throat> well, I wanna change moles of propane into moles of oxygen. And you say, well, how in the world do you use numbers there? Where do I get my numbers when I go sideways in the mole world? What do you think? I know if I go up or down, I get my numbers with molar masses, but what if I'm going sideways, where do I get my numbers to build my conversion factor? Anybody remember? Coefficients. <clears throat> and that's why we balance an equation. God said, not me, he said, one mole that will not react with one mole that. It won't happen. You won't be able to use all that up, okay? But if you have one mole of that <clears throat> and you have five moles of that, but everything's going to you'll use up every bit of that okay so that's called a mole ratio and that's the coefficients isn't it all right so now this little thing here gave me this number and now if i want to come up then i go from moles of oxygen to grams and here you go again see how i use molar mass again now if you can do this with factor label you'll know what's going on i know a lot of you liked that shortcut didn't you because this problem took over 10 minutes, the shortcut takes about a minute, right? But some people try to use a shortcut and they don't know where it comes from. And then they start making mistakes and they don't know how to fix it. So I will, and I'm not, I'm not even gonna apologize. I'm gonna make you use factor label for a while. And then I'll say, okay, you're on your own. You wanna use shortcut, you can use shortcut, get it? Like on the test, all the multiple choice questions. I'd use shortcut. But you know I'm going to have one where you have to show your work. Is that right? That's it? Okay. So, um, are you okay on that? All right. Um, so, you want to try one? Let's try one. And let's use the long cut today. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll show you, remind you how to do the shortcut. <clears throat> All right. Let's do another problem. Um, mm -hmm. Let's try to find one here. It says here, uh, I have, you don't have to have your books, but um, maybe not 
ready for that yet. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pick one that's on uh, page 242, and that's an easier problem. 242, page 242. All right, it says here, um, what number of moles of O2 <clears throat> will be produced <clears throat> by the decomposition of 5.8 moles of water? <clears throat> All right, so it says the decomposition of water. So let's see if you can do that. Let's do the decomposition of water. Everybody know how to do that? <clears throat> what are you gonna put for the decomposition of water? Okay. Do we have that? All right, diatomic elements. All right, now we have to balance it. Um, put a two here. Did everybody balance it right? <clears throat> All right. You can't do. You cannot do stoichiometry unless you have a balanced equation. Let me read it again. Uh, how many uh, how many moles of O2 will be produced by the decomposition of 5.8 moles of water? Now. I do not put 5.8 moles up here. What, what do I put up here? I put anything except moles. Where do I put moles? Underground. This says how many moles of O2, they want me to find that number. How many moles of O2 are formed by the decomposition of 5.8 moles of water? Ah, wait a minute. You're gonna give me the moles? Yeah. Well, where am I gonna put it? I'm not gonna put it up here. I'm gonna put it down here, right? And now, uh, what am I gonna do? Watch this. I'm already, I'm already underground, aren't I? I'm already in the mole world. So I'll just put 5.8 moles of water. That's my given. And I wanna convert it into what? I wanna change moles, sorry, of water into moles of O2. Now, what's this? What do we do here? When you go sideways in the mole world, where do you get your numbers for the factor label? From the coefficient, ready? And it says here for this balance equation, for every two moles of water, you're only gonna get one mole of O2. Of o and, oh, I get it, I see. <coughs> What do you think about that? <clears throat> so I didn't do a problem just like yesterday because this one, they give me moles. I'll tell you what the best thing is about this. It's not that I got to draw a tree or draw a brick, brick wall. The best thing about this was if you want to do these problems and get them right this year, maybe you take advanced chemistry in the 12th grade, we'll do them there. If you take it in college, if you want to, if you want to tell me what I really want to get out of this is how to organize your material. I put anything except moles up here, and I only put moles down here. And if you ask me, look at this problem here. You say, <clears throat> ask me right now, say, <clears throat> how many grams of CO2 were formed? Boink, I'm there. How many moles of O2 uh, were used? Boink. And what I'm really teaching you is, if I need to find information, this is how I organize it, like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, um, what about, are you okay on this though? The answer is 2.9, right? Now, let's do a little bit of shortcut. You want to do some shortcut? No one asked me to find how many moles of this there were. Nobody did that. And nobody asked me uh, how many grams of that. But I'm going to do it anyway just for practice. So let's try it. You want to get ready for a shortcut? Ready for a shortcut? Ready? I'm going to go from here to here. Ready? <clears throat> I'm going sideways. <clears throat> now watch. Two, two, magic, magic. Matchy, matchy. Yeah? I like matchy, matchy. See that? Oh. Matchy, matchy. Okay. <clears throat> if that's if it's a 2 to 2 ratio, if I give you 5.8, you better have 5.8 here, right? Isn't that right? A one to, isn't that a 1 to 1 thing? <clears throat> now, how do you come up out of the mole world? How do you come up out of the mole world? You what? What's that thing? When you come up out of the mole world, you multiply, that's stupid, isn't it? You multiply by the molar mass. What's the molar mass of H2O? 
Don't look at that. Look at that, too. I only look at coefficients when I go sideways. See that? What's the molar mass of H2O any day? All right, multiply that times 18. What do you get? Put that down. Put that right here. Tell me how many grams of water they started with. I have no idea what 18 times 5.8 is. What is it? Hey, Caleb, what do you have? 5.8 times 18. One hundred four point what? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now this one. Ready? Multiply by the molar mass of H two. Is that right? What's that going to give me? Eleven point. Was that eleven point uh, six? Okay. And then what about this guy? Two point nine times the molar mass of O two. That's thirty two. What's two point nine times thirty two? Uh, help me out. What do you have? 92.8. Okay, now, <clears throat> what I want you to do is add the mass of the products and compare it to the mass of the reactant. <clears throat> and if it's not close, if it's not close, you've made a mistake, haven't you? That's the law of conservation of mass, All right? <clears throat> is it pretty close? Okay, what do you think? Oh, this is not bad. This is not bad. I think I could do this. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you another thing that is in the book. The last three pages. I'm going to do the last three pages now. I'm going to do the last three pages because it's easy. And I'm going to show you a saying. It's called percent yield. <clears throat> now, if you look in the book, um, percent yield says actual yield <clears throat> divided by the theoretical yield. Theoretic yield. <clears throat> uh, times 100. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. You might say to yourself, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure what you mean. In that world out there, the real world, um, what we just did on paper, see this? That's heaven. This is perfect. You know how perfect it is? No one ever got a test tube out. No one got a beaker out. This right here is all theoretical. And I know what you're thinking. Well, then it should happen in the real factory. Yeah, yeah, that's what you think. What do you think's going to happen if I do this experiment in the real world? Do you think I'm going to get perfection? I don't. And <clears throat> companies sometimes say, when we make our materials, right now we've estimated that our percent yield is about <clears throat> 70%. Now, what does that mean to the CEO? Does everybody know what a CEO? Chief Executive Officer? Okay. The person who's in charge of everything. What does that mean when he said, our percent yield is about 70%? Hmm. Well, that's nice. That's nice. But... Could we go higher than that? Do you know what that means to the CEO? It means 30% of the money they spend <clears throat> is being wasted. Because only 70% is producing what I want them to produce, right? I'm getting 30% of the money we're spending is being wasted. <clears throat> now, I know my other company, who's our competitor, they also are at 70% yield. So they're wasting 30% too. That's what's keeping us in business. You get it? <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm thinking about hiring a chemical engineer and they're going to come in and look at the entire plant and they're going to see how we make this <clears throat> and what kind of pipes and what diameter pipes and what the temperatures is and, and this and everything and what kind of fuel we use and they're going to eventually uh, tell me some changes that we could make and I'm going to pay them a hundred thousand dollars the first year they're here <clears throat> what chemical engineers very high high pay because they're going to come in <clears throat> and they're going to say I've analyzed all of your systems. Here's what I would do. And then they start making changes. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> within a year, that next year, the company goes from 70 to 85% yield. Now, what if you're a multi-million dollar company and you went from 70, instead of wasting 30% of your money, you're only wasting 15. That's good, isn't it? 
You think you just paid for your, uh, your engineer for the next 10 years? Oh, yes, you did. Now, what's going to happen to your competitor? <clears throat> you're going to be able to sell your product cheaper because you're wasting less money, right? And so you're going to outcompete that person, and it, they didn't want to spend the money for the engineer, so they lose. <clears throat> They're going to lose. And I know you don't like that. It sounds very cutthroat. But if you know anything about the business world, you can have several businesses of the same type if they're running about the same. But if one of them outcompetes you a lot, uh, it's going to be hard for people to buy your product. <clears throat> so I, I, whether you like that or not, that's actually part of the world. So this percent yield is something they're really interested in. All right, so here we go. Uh, and there are all kinds of reasons why, like maybe, uh, maybe, as the, uh, maybe you're producing a gas and, and when you try to change the gas back into a liquid, some of the gas doesn't change into a liquid or it gets stuck or it gets lost, you know, or released. And that's where you get waste. Or, or maybe when you were doing your stoichiometry, you thought you were supposed to put this many grams or kilograms in there and you put a little bit less, a little bit more. And, and so you didn't, it didn't work out well. But there's all kinds of reasons why you don't get 100%. You're not gonna get 100% yield, okay? No one that I know of gets 100% yield. So now, this is the simplest part of the last two pages of the chapter, and I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? <clears throat> a student actually, actually did, did this reaction. They did the above experiment. <clears throat> and they got they got um, 80 grams of oxygen. <clears throat> what is their percent yield? <clears throat> All right, ready? So <clears throat> what was the actual yield? When they did the experiment, what did they actually get? They got 80 grams of oxygen. <clears throat> what in the perfect world <clears throat> the theoretical yield is the perfect world what could they have gotten with no error what could they have gotten at the very most look up here there it is see that see none of this had involved any beaker did it this is all paper and pencil isn't it that's theoretical so 92.8 on a great day, maybe you, you want to try to get 92.8, but you're not going to get there. All right, find your percent yield. <clears throat> and you know what? I multiply by 100 to move the decimal over. Does everybody know that? Okay, so let's do it. What is the percent yield of this student's experiment? You already got it? Ooh, that's good. Let's wait till everybody gets it. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys, you guys are catching on to a lot of things very quickly. <clears throat> All right, show your neighbor, show your neighbor what you got and see if you uh, match. <laughs> matchy, matchy. I like that. Ethan, that's good. Everybody got it? Okay, um, who can I call on? How about Elizabeth? What'd you get? 87.21. 87. what? Three one? Two one. Two. What wait a minute? Eighty six. Two. Point two. Two. One. Did everybody get something like that? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> That's not bad. That is not bad. Later, you guys are gonna do an experiment <clears throat> and when we get this chapter done, you're gonna do an experiment where you're gonna figure out the theoretical yield of this uh, precipitate. Remember precipitates? And so you're gonna uh, you're actually gonna make the precipitate but it's on, in a test tube, or it's in a beaker, and how, what are you gonna do with it? Because it's in a beaker of water, and it's sitting at the bottom. What do you think you're gonna do to it? I need to find that precipitate. <clears throat> what are you gonna do to it? I'm looking at your faces. You, you react these two chemicals <clears throat> in a beaker, and this precipitate's there, it's sitting in the beaker, but it's all, it's getting water. What are you gonna do? I need to know the mass of that precipitate. What do you think you're gonna do? Raise your hand, if you know. I guess. How about I guess? <clears throat> Ty, what would you do? I got a beaker. The precipitate's in there. But it's got it's covered with water and everything. And 
How am I supposed to know how many grams of precipitate I have? How am I going to separate the water from the precipitate? This is like first semester stuff. What do you think? Anybody else? What do you think? I could. I could let the evaporate. I could let it wake up about a week and a half. I could do that. What else could I do? Think about first semester. Ooh, somebody, I know somebody here has it. They got it just, right now. You're ready, you're ready to tell me. <coughs> uh oh. <clears throat> we did one of those. I even set up a demonstration in the first quarter. And I said, how do you separate sand from uh, iron fire? Didn't I do that? And then I had some salt. <clears throat> how did I separate those? Do a what? What's that called? Filter. Yeah. So instead of a funnel, I put a filter paper in it. In, and that's what you guys will do. <clears throat> You'll do that. And, and you're going to pour that in there. The water will go through the filter, but the precipitate will be trapped in the filter, right? <clears throat> and then what are we going to do when we get uh, everything out in there and the precipitate's in the filter paper? What am I going to do? I'm going to take it out carefully, put it on a whole bunch of paper towel, and let that water and the filter paper soak away. <clears throat> and then eventually, after two days, I'll be able to weigh it. I'll be able to weigh the, the dry precipitate and then we'll be able to do our percent yield. You get that? But you know what you better remember to do before you do the experiment? You better find out the mass of that filter paper before you start. Because when you get done, it's going to be sitting on that uh, filter paper, isn't it? You're not going to be able to scrape it off. So if I have <clears throat> the mass of the filter paper and the precipitate, let's say it's 10 grams, and the, precipitate and the filter paper is 1 gram, then what's the mass of the precipitate? nine grams isn't it and so that's what you're going to do and then you're going to find out theoretically how many grams you could have gotten you'll say but that's how much i actually got and you do a percent yield see how this all works out is this is this making sense to you and, and <clears throat> we do it on a little tiny level <clears throat> our little level in the classroom <clears throat> is tiny imagine doing that with millions of pounds of product and trying to figure out the percent yield that's the major, that's big boy and girl world, isn't it? Of course, that's why they get paid to do that. And that's how companies make, they can make a lot of money. They can also lose a lot of money, can't they? <clears throat> All right, what do you think of percent yield? Is that pretty easy? That's like the last three pages of the chapter, and, and I think that's the easiest part there. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to... Um, show you one more thing and then we're going to move on um, move on to uh, something else <clears throat> um i'm gonna go to um eh. <clears throat> i'll tell you what i'll start here <clears throat> i'd like to show you one more thing um and then this is kind of minor uh, i'm gonna wait till monday to do the major thing there's a major uh thing about the chapter and i'll do that on monday but this next thing we're going to do has to do with uh gases and um, the people who did the mold concept, there were two people that uh, should have been given credit. One of them was called um, Avogadro. Okay, you've heard of that one? And he came up, uh, and his other one was called uh, Gay Luzak. Gay Luzak was the other chemist that did this. And they both did their uh, experiments with gases. And they took a volume of gas <clears throat> and reacted it with a volume of another gas, and they tried to get a product. And they, uh, everything was done with gases. <clears throat> and so one thing I haven't shown you this is in the book, they'll talk about a thing called STP. And what that means is <clears throat> when you have a gas, and I say, hey, what's the volume of the gas? Uh, imagine a balloon. I say, what's the volume of that balloon? Well, what if I take it and put it in the freezer? What's the volume of the balloon? What if I put it in some warm water? What if it's at room temperature? Okay, so what that means is in chemistry, if you have a gas as a product, you have to you have to say, well, it all depends on what the temperature of the room was and the what. 
what if I take a balloon and I take it up to uh, Denver, which is one mile above sea level? Here's my balloon. Take it up to Denver. I take it back down to sea level. You know what happens? You ever, do, you ever take a trip like up to the mountains somewhere and, and on the back you got some, a bag of potato chips? You ever done that? And you get to the top of the mountain and says, look at my bag, look at my potato chip bag. It's all blown up. It, have you seen that? You've seen it, have you? That's why you're laughing. Yeah. You have, haven't you? He said, whoa, my, my potato chip bag is puffy. Yeah. It's all, it's like it's getting ready to explode. Well, you went up, you went up high. You went up high <clears throat> and there's not as much air pressure. So the air inside the bag went, oh, you're not going to press on me as much? See? Anyway, so one more thing. This is a minor. This is a minor. In the world of chemistry, if gases are produced, we have to say, well, what temperature and what pressure are you at? So we call that standard temperature <clears throat> and pressure. So I'll tell you one thing. Anytime I say STP, anytime I say STP, standard temperature and pressure, standard temperature happens to be uh, zero degrees Celsius and it's uh, called one atmosphere pressure. You don't have to know that necessarily. It might be a bonus question, but anyway, let's just say, uh, if you and I are gonna talk about gases, I need to know what temperature and pressure are. Okay, SVP. Okay, now, there's a blue box over there. Everybody see a blue box way up there? It's been sitting there all year. You have no idea what that means, all right? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Av Avogadro and Gatuzak figured out that <clears throat> That box happens to be 22.4 liters. This right here is a liter. There's a box right there. That's a liter. <clears throat> That's 22.4 liters. Now, <clears throat> what they found out, at STP, you put any kind of gas you want in there, any kind, helium, carbon dioxide, any kind of gas. If it takes up 22.4 liters of space, how much gas is in there? One mole. Oh man, wait a minute, <clears throat> are you kidding me? So what would we call that? It wouldn't be molar mass, but what would we call the 22.4 liters? Molar what? Molar volume. So all you have to remember is that one mole of any gas at STP takes up how much space? 22. Four liters of space. So now let's go down here. Ready? <clears throat> I want to know what if you're doing an experiment and you want to know <clears throat> how I'm going to try to catch this oxygen gas. Okay, what kind of container you want to put it in? I don't know. How much oxygen gas am I going to produce? Uh, 92.8 uh, grams. But how much space is that? Let's find out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the mole world. I'm gonna show you, because I've done this many, many years. I know in chemistry, if you're in the mole world, you can go anywhere you want. So I'm gonna start with 2.9 moles of O2. <clears throat> and what I really wanna know is, I don't wanna know how many grams it is. I wanna know how much space it's gonna take up. What's the volume of this gas at STP? Okay, so this is that STP. And by the way, if you hear STP, you just say, eh, eh. and this is only for gases, by the way. Everybody got that? All right, what do you know? Oh, let's, let's talk about oxygen here. One mole of O2 equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of O2 equals 32 grams of O2. Uh oh, I have another one. Watch. Ooh. Now there, I have another equivalent? Yes. <clears throat> See that? And now one mole of O2 equals all of those things. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so now all I'm asking you to do is the three equivalents you already know how to do, right? If it's a gas, add that one to it. And now here we go. Are you going to give me all these equivalents and I can use any two I want? What one do I get rid of? Let's see, moles of O2. And I'd like to replace it with liters. Liters of O2. Liters of O2. All right, what do you know about this? Look over here. One mole of O2 is how many liters? 
Oh, this works out. <clears throat> this works out. All right, so how much space is my uh, 2.9 moles of oxygen going to take up? How much space? Do I got it? Looks like it's um, 366. It's going to be close to 60, between 63 and 65. What is it? Nine six. I'll just say sixty five. Okay. What do you think? <clears throat> two kind of simple things in this chapter. Get it? The two simple things were percent yield, and we'll practice that. And this is uh, how much volume? How much volume does it take up? What would the shortcut be? What if I tell you you had uh, five moles of um, chlorine gas? Five moles of chlorine gas. How much space does it take up? What's the shortcut? Moles times what? Moles times 22.4, ready? Because one mole, one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters, right? So five moles will be five times that. Now we have plenty of time. We're gonna practice all this, you get it? We're gonna practice all that. So I'm gonna give you something today. And it's gonna be a homework assignment we're gonna work on. And Thank you very much for handing those out. All right, now, uh, you can put the rest of them on the back table if you want, thank you. What I'd like you to do is um, put your name on this, but you're not gonna, you, um, you're gonna turn this in, but I want everything, all your work to be on a separate sheet of paper. So if you can get a piece of paper out, I will work, I'll help you work through the beginnings um, of these. I'll do like, uh, we'll do the first two, and then we'll skip to section nine two. We'll do the first two, and and um, this is important now. This is important. You're not ready. You're not ready for the ones in the back. Get that? So don't touch those. Don't touch those yet. Get it? You should be able to do all the ones in the front, but you're not ready for the ones in the back. Let's start with number one. An apple pie needs ten large apples, two crusts, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. Write a balanced equation that fits this situation. How many apples are needed to make 25 pies? What the? What the? What? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write a balanced equation for this. And I already did one up here, it's up here, ready? Uh, 10 LAs, what's that? Large apples, plus what? Two crust, plus one tablespoon of cinnamon um, equals one apple pie. <clears throat> hey, balance. All right, it's already balanced. It's already balanced. <clears throat> That's neat. Now it says here, um, how many apples are needed to make twenty-five pies? Watch now. How many pies you want to make? How many pies you want to make? I want to make 25 pies. So, uh, so they want to know how many apples would it take? Oh, okay, I guess. <clears throat> so 
So what the author is doing is saying, I want you to practice this thing called mole ratios. Remember mole ratios? Now again, I'm not using shortcut, not yet, not yet. <clears throat> so how we do this, ready? What you do is you would say, uh, okay, I, I mean, I'm sorry, you don't have to use factorial for these, ready? 10, one, get it? One, 10. This number has to be 10 times larger than that. Another way of saying it, this number has to be one tenth of that one, doesn't it? So ready? If 10, if it takes 10 of those to make one, then what if I wanna make 25? See, now let's do shortcut, ready? One, 10, gotta get bigger, gotta get bigger. Are you gonna multiply by 10 over one or one over 10? Which one's gonna make you bigger? One had to get bigger, you have to get bigger. Which, which uh, fraction is gonna make me bigger? 10 over one. And he said, oh, I, I see, I see. You're trying to keep the ratio of the balanced equation the same. That's right, that's right. All right, let's do number two. <clears throat> All right, you try number two. You try number two. It says here, two moles of potassium chloride. Man, the author's really nice. They're gonna tell me the balanced equation? Huh, thank you. Two moles of balance, uh, and plus three moles. Ooh, thanks for doing that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Will, uh, oops. Do, 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 do. What happened here? Oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I forgot? <clears throat> I made a mistake. What's the word that I, I forgot I left out? Two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen are what? Uh, 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 are what? Produced. Oh, that means you're over here. Okay. Two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen are produced, my fault, <clears throat> from the decomposition of what? Two moles of potassium chloride. <clears throat> well, you know, the nice thing is they balanced the equation for me, didn't they? Now, I bet there's some more information here. Um, hmm, write the balanced equation. How we do that? How many moles of oxygen are produced how many moles of oxygen are produced, that's what they want me to find, from 12 moles, ah, I see. <clears throat> see what they're, you know what they're having you practice now? This is called mole ratios, isn't it? <clears throat> the balanced equation says, for every two of those, you have to get what? Three of those, is that right? Yes, no? You have to have a two to three ratio. So what if I don't give you two? What if I give you 12? Well, you still have to have that same ratio. Ready? Two, three. Gotta get bigger. Got two had to get bigger, didn't it? What fraction is gonna make two get bigger and become three? I'll give you a choice. Either multiply by two thirds or multiply by three halves. Which one will make the number bigger? Does everybody understand how to do this? Okay, does everybody know that three halves makes you bigger? And three halves, one and a half? Ooh, yeah, that'll make me bigger. So I'm gonna say 12 times three halves, and what do we have here? How much? 18? And by the way, they didn't ask for this, so I'm gonna ask you this. <clears throat> how, many, how many moles of this will be produced? Magic, magic. <clears throat> Isn't that right? Well, I get it. The first four problems are really to make me simply go sideways in the mole world. Is that right? I can do that. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Let's skip some now and give some room for number three and four. Let's go back to section 9.2 now. <clears throat> now. Let's do the first one of those, and then that'll be a great start. And you'll have the rest of the period to work on this. All right. Um, calculate the number of moles of hydrogen chloride produced from 10 moles of hydrogen. Okay, there we go. I, 
That's pretty nice. This person's giving me the balance equation, isn't it? Man, that's nice. <clears throat> now, let's look at the information. Calculate the number of moles of hydrogen chloride produced. Oh, moles? That's down here. Huh? <laughs> I'm in the mole world. And what are you going to give me? 10 moles of hydrogen? Oh, okay. Ten mo You're going to give me 10 moles? I'll take it. <clears throat> anyway, what I like to do is, it says here uh, on section 9.2, it says you must use factor label. I already know shortcut what the answer is, but let's do factor label. Ready? 10 moles h2 and what do we want to convert it to Can you speak oh yeah oh, yeah thank you very much for telling me that <clears throat> i'm starting with 10 moles of h2 and i want to find out how many moles so i want moles of h2 to get rid of them and change it into moles of hcl and i go over here and look at the balance equation and i see what do i see for every one mole of hydrogen, it'll produce. Ah, oh. does that make sense for shortcut now? <clears throat> well, if you had to do shortcut, what you done? Gotta get bigger. Gotta get bigger. Multiply by what? One half or two over one? <clears throat> hey, we did. That's why the shortcut works. And then all of a sudden, you put twenty moles. Okay, so. What I'd like to do is, yes, I'm going to make you use a uh, factor label, but you can go back and check it with shortcut to see if you made a mistake. And then there's going to be a point when I feel confident, I'm going to say, you don't have to show it. See it? There'll be a time I'll let you use only shortcut. But it, it's not there yet. Uh, yeah, the rest of the period to work on this, um, well, that's six minutes. So if you don't mind, maybe you could finish uh, number three and four and say, well, I got that section done. <clears throat> All right. I'll walk around the room, and uh, if you have any questions,